Hi everyone, I'm JD from Miller Van Journals. Welcome back to my channel. We are back continuing on with this Make a Junk Journal with Me series where we're making a book cover journal together. One of these collage journals. So I'll link the playlist below if you missed it or want to catch up on doing the cover and the pages. So I'll give you a look at what it looks like now that I've done the pockets, which we did in the previous video. So just a quick little look at that. So I've sewn all my pockets in there and now we are ready to bind. So we need an awl, we need a needle and some thread. I use embroidery thread, but you can use wax linen thread or whatever you like. A ruler, a pen, and I've got my scissors. <laughs> and you also want, this is how I do it, a A4 sized piece of paper and all I've done with this is fold it in half and fold it in half again. So this is what I'm going to use to mark my template of where I'm putting my holes and I will show you that later and first of all I just want to make sure my signature is all centered and laid out nicely so I'm just going to go through it and line everything up okay so I don't want that pocket down there why is that down there let's put that pocket at the top there we go let's move that into the center a little bit more okay there we go so just going to grab that center everything oh you also want some bobby pins or some paper clips or bulldog clips just to keep everything in place so it doesn't move and then all right let's actually sorry doing this all out of order you're seeing my pack process naturally how it comes out all right this is the part that i think people get a bit intimidated about marking their holes all right so we have a spine here and I'm going to try to see if I can see in the camera if you can see this. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to see where, oh, hello, thread, where my creases are. So there to there is the width of my spine. So I'm going to measure that. And I, it's, I already knew this, but for the sake of this video, it's three centimeters. So what I can do is straight away mark the midway point, one and a half centimeters. That will be my middle line where my middle signature will go because um, we've only got three signatures and anytime you have an odd number of signatures you can always just find the middle line straight away so have the width of the spine and there's your middle line okay now there are a few different ways that you can measure the lines for the other two signatures one way when i first started was to get my calculator out and go three centimeters like the width of the spine divided by the number of signatures that you're going to put in the journal plus one. So I would do three divided by four and then I would, whatever that would be, I would measure that out, which would be a 0 0.7, 0 0.666 or something like that. And then I would literally measure 0.66 or whatever it is here and then 0.66 or whatever it is over there too. I find that a bit tedious and time consuming. So now that I've done this quite a lot of times, what I now do is kind of eyeball it. So I grab my ruler and I don't not sure if you can see my ruler. Oh, yes, you can. Um, you, it's a clear ruler so I can see these lines and these lines are really great because these can show me exactly where, like I can put the line here if I want it there or I can make the line wider there or I can do it somewhere in between. So I use these lines of my ruler to guide where to put my line rather than measuring to the exact dot. If you want to have it absolutely perfect and measured out that way so it's the exact same gap between each signature, of course, use your calculator to do that. But I'm okay with just eyeballing. And so what I do is I kind of make sure I can see where the gap is between my ruler and the gap between my ruler where that I can see through the ruler how much that gap is see I can also see how much gap there is between here so I'm just going to try and center it so that the gap here is equal to the gap here and I don't mind if it's not exact as long as it is you know <laughs> um, roughly what I want so you can kind of see that 
that line yep all right so what I'm gonna do is turn it around and just do the same for this side so I'm just going to find where to my eye where it's roughly even that gap but I mean there's so many ways to do this because some people prefer a wider gap here and signatures closer together and others prefer a narrower gap here and signatures further apart so it just depends what you want if you want them closer in further apart or absolutely even or roughly even for me I like it roughly even <laughs> all right so there's my three lines where my signatures are going to go now to find where my holes are going we're going to be doing the three hole pamphlet stitch so that we're going to have a hole in the middle and a hole at the bottom and a hole at the top this is where this comes in so grab an edge and what we want to first of all do is measure the width no not the width the length of the spine so it's 19 centimeters so I then know to find the middle point we just want to go okay I think I want to go yeah so nine and a half right there so all I'm doing is marking a line just there and that's my middle line for the center now different people have different how much they want to go in some people like to go in like really far to do their bottom and top holes I like going about two centimeters in I have done one and a half before I either usually do one and a half to two centimeters so I'm going to go two centimeters for this one all right so there are my holes yeah now all I'm going to do is grab my lines on the book and I'm just going to then mark my holes move it down to the next line mark the holes move it down to the next line and mark my holes so yes I know this looks intimidating and a lengthy tedious process but once you set it up you're all good to go so let's put our holes in there now so one two three one two three I'm just going to turn it around because I find it easier to put my holes in this way one two three all right now we still need this don't throw this out <laughs> because now what we're going to do is grab our signature and I'm just going to make sure that's lined up properly I might just cut that top bit off I can see that sticking out okay now what I want to do is come in here and center it so can you see because of how I've cut it there's a gap at the bottom and a gap at the top so the pages fit nicely inside the journal some people like putting the paper right to the edges that's cool too just do whatever works for you but just center it and then open it up keeping it centered grab your template um so you know that this is the end that matches up here sometimes you might also actually want to just make a long well i make a longer line so that i know this is the bottom of my book and this is the top of my book or my cover and then all i do is mark my lines oh sorry my holes and then i grab my all and now this is the exact same process that we do for our single signature journals yeah so you've got your middle hole go through the middle hole okay let me all right it's a little bit tricky and there's different ways to do this but okay that just so it grabs the pages and they're not going to move so now i'm going to do my bottom hole now let's go through them all right so i'm working from top to bottom you don't have to do this you can go from bottom to the top or whatever but i've got the front cover here so i've got the first signature in my hands so let's put it into this first line for our first signature i'm going to go out through there back in through here exact same method as three hole pamphlet stitch for the single covered journals pull it through you've seen me do this many times probably if you followed along with these series what you want to do is pull this thread down hard 
not too hard that you rip but you know hard so that when you go back through this middle hole hang on a second it does it can be a bit tricky I know it looks intimidating but keep on going just pull it tight so everything should be lined up your holes are all lined up so you should be able to just put that straight through like that and it catches the cover if you pull it tight enough now you want to go back through this hole and of course you could change the order of this you can punch your hole first and then come back through there whatever's easiest for you you could even just punch all your three holes at the start if you want but I find this way works best if you're nervous about the pages moving now I'm just going to wiggle 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 because I've got too much leeway here so I'm going to just pull this out, he out here so it catches this uh, sorry what am I doing all right now I've done too much so I'm gonna wiggle that so I can get more here all right let's go down through here and then we will pull this one down this way pull this one up this way and I showed you how you went under that one so you can do that so it catches so that it's nice and tight and then do make sure though that you just check on the outside because sometimes it might feel tight on the inside but you don't realize that's caught and that's why it's tight and on the outside it's loose so yeah you want it to have that snap kind of sound to be taut but not too tight that you're ripping holes and then I have just taken to be doing triple knots at the moment I used to only do double knots but I don't know I just feel safer doing a triple knot and then that goes through there now all we do is repeat the process yeah so grab your next signature just have a look through and I want to arrange them so that everything is centered or at the top or bottom where I want it I want you at the top I want you centered I want you centered and I want you centered and I want you down there and I want you there and I want you here so let's put that there in fact you know what I don't mind too much sometimes when they move you realize when you got to a flip through oh it's actually interesting the way it naturally fell <laughs> rather than being so structured um, it kind of has a nice look when it's just random as well so I got my bobby pins now I'm going to go th to the middle signature the line for the middle signature which you can see there I'm just going to place it inside so that there's a gap at the top and bottom an equal gap and then I grab my template and I line everything up and I mark my holes sometimes if you have a very busy page in the center you can't see where your holes are so it can be a bit tricky finding where to um, place your awl now I'm just going to catch that with my awl because I haven't threaded my needle yet um, and I hope that this is helpful that this is easy to follow easy to see and I hope that yeah this is not scary at all when you give it a go um, yes of course it takes a little bit of fiddling around the first go or the first few goes but practice 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 you'll get better the more you do it and you will pick up your own tips and tricks that you find work best for you and you'll find out what you like in terms of how far apart you like the signatures how far in you like your holes and your methods of the order that you do things you'll pick all that up the more you do this so we're going to go in through the middle back in through the bottom open everything up catch it here pull it through grab your all make your next hole grab your needle and come back through the bottom hole let's go over here pull it tight down so that everything should be lined up now sometimes it won't be lined up and you'll just have to wiggle 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 until you've got it matched up just kind of jiggle things around <laughs> and get it matched up 
come back through the top, find your next hole and go straight through. See again why I'm doing this, the three holes directly before I'm going through with the thread is just so I know everything is matched up nicely and the holes aren't going to move and the pages haven't moved so that my needle can go straight through. So again, just double check on the outside to make sure everything is pulled through tight. You want to try and get the same tension as the, so they're all even. So I feel like that one's a bit loose. So I'm just going to tighten it a tiny bit, cut those ends off so that I can now tie my triple knot. Okay, on the home stretch, guys, how are you going? Let me know in the comments if you're following along and how you're going. And if you have your own tips and tricks, feel free to share. Because like I said, everyone will find their own way of doing things. So let's just go to this one. I'm going to put that at the top again. These ones at the bottom. All right, so let's go to here and catch the middle, slide on the bobby pins. Okay, now we've got our last signature here. The line is just there. Make sure you're centered and deep, uh, even gap at the bottom and the top. Line everything up so it's beautifully centered. Go with your holes, one, two, three. I'm going to thread my needle. And let's just grab this. I chose this bright blue thread as well just because the cover is so bold. A nice beautiful blue so I wanted something um, to match how striking that is. <laughs> Okay, here we go guys, on the home stretch. So, let's go through the middle hole, go back through, and this works for any signature journal, yeah? If you've got four signatures, five, six, ten, twenty signatures, you just do the exact same thing. Now, going through the middle hole, coming back through the bottom hole, Okay, and you can always use your template for future journals and I'll show you my other templates for the other journals. So I keep them because I often use a Reader's Digest book. So I know every time I use a Reader's Digest book, I can keep my template. I don't have to re-measure all of, all of these lines. I can just keep this and I even mark it like, um, so hang on <laughs> yeah let me just show you this i can even do like a little key and that means readers digest book because this is what i have for other ones so these are for previous journal covers i've done and actually the one with the stars that is the readers digest book and i could have used this but i didn't want to confuse you with all of these other marks but i can get any cover and i can put this on the cover and know oh that's how big my cover is and I can get my holes and just choose one already here. I don't have to re-measure everything. If I don't have a cover the right size, then I of course have to make my holes again. But I just keep it. I just keep my little sheet and keep going and going and going um, so that I only need one sheet. I don't have to have like 10 different templates for different books <laughs> and I don't keep chucking them out and making new ones. So I'm not sure if that is a helpful tip for anyone out there. Um, some people were asking me about my template and saying, can you send me it? And I'm like, it won't help because like, I, only I know what the books are for, but I can't tell until I have the book. <laughs> um, and it's just dependent on what book you have. So you can use that template for any style of journal at all. So I've used it for little golden books. I've used it for my own journals I make from chipboard. I use it for any book cover that I find at the op shop. And if there's, yeah, like I said, if there's no holes for the particular size book cover that I picked up, I'll just do a new set of lines on the same piece of paper. 
but it does become too cluttered after a while, yes, and it's hard to see. So that, that's when I start a new piece and I chuck out the old one. Okay, so this is our last signature, you guys. I hope that you've had fun following along. I hope that this wasn't too tricky and I hope that you are enjoying it. <laughs> And um, it's now a journal. So in the next video, we will be doing the adding ephemera into all of those pockets, getting a whole bunch of paper clips. So get a bunch of paper clips ready. We're gonna be paper clipping in a lot of ephemera too. All of the digital kits and everything that I've used for this journal are available in my Etsy or for Ruby patrons over on Patreon. But you can use anything you want, of course, but have a look at this, you guys, it's a journal. It's a journal. Looks so good when it's a journal. And here is my binding. Okay, so that is the journal. Um, and I apologize also for the delay in getting this video out. So, so sorry. Constant week was very, very full on and I was extremely tired and had zero energy. So sorry for the break, but um, yeah, we are back into it. <laughs> and thank you so, so much to all the people who um, left such lovely comments in, I think it was not the last video, but the video before in this series. Thank you, thank you so, so much for your support. Um, that was really, really sweet. <laughs> I had a, a bit of a down moment, but you guys lifted me up. And thank you so much for your encouragement and your love and really, really appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video where we go on to do the ephemera. And that's the last video. And then we'll do the flip through at the very end. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. You are all beautiful, beautiful gems. You are gifts to the world. Thank you so much for being you. Shine bright out there. And you just bring goodness and light and beauty to those around you. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.